Look at, if, you're, if you're sitting after row five, you're not going to retain anything, just so you know. Anybody in, no, it's just the way it is. According to research, if you sit more than five rows back, you're just not going to. Put the mic where? You can't hear me? All right, I'll keep it right there. It's a very strange mic. It's very hard to give a PowerPoint when the screen is white, so hopefully that will be corrected. He's holding something up, the AV guy. He's holding up a cable. But seriously, I'm going to be talking really fast to try to get through 100 slides in 40 minutes. So therefore, if you have any questions, I would ask now, because I'm sure at the end there won't be time. I know it's kind of hard to ask a question before you've seen the presentation. But what the heck, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so, okay, so it's a good question. The question was, what is my problem with Beyond Burgers and Gardein? So, fair question. This is a specific talk, talk about, uh, uh, that will help people that are struggling to lose weight, lose weight on a, on a vegan diet. So, it's, it, my personal problem with it is that I was fat and sick for many years. I was 200 pounds, even though I had been a vegan for 26 years, and I had the beginning of colon cancer. And it wasn't from eating meat, and it wasn't from eating cheese. It was from eating vegan junk food. Now, there are people that are going to be genetically blessed and can eat all the junk they want, vegan or not, and not be overweight and not get cancer. But that wasn't me. And so my problem is, is it did make me, me fat and sick, and I'm learning more and more that it's the same case with other people. So that's the problem. That's a book I wrote 10 years ago before I was even interested in weight loss. It's called Unprocessed because I made the case that human beings are not designed to eat processed food, whether they're from a plant or an animal, that we're designed to eat our food whole. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Now, does that mean you can never have any processed food or junk food? No, but it really depends on your goals, what your goals are. So if you already have cancer, heart disease, or diabetes, you might want to stay away from those things. And if you're struggling with your weight, if you're not, Knock yourself out. But I've been vegan for, for 42 years and two months and 25 days. But who's counting? <laughs> uh, who's counting, right? Actually, um, good question though. And that's, that's, that's often what I talk about is, is unprocessed. So yeah, very good. Jack LaLanne said 13 words. If God made it, eat it. If man made it, don't eat it. So um, yeah, um, the Beyond Meat and stuff, very high in oil and, and just, and, and also what I worry about more than just the oil and the fat, you know, anytime you have those isolates, soy protein, those are linked to raising IGF-1. I just, you know, everybody in my family is dead from cancer, heart disease. I have a very strong family history of these diseases, so I need to be more careful as I approach my 60th birthday. But there are some people that can eat all the shit they want and just do fine. But you just have to know who you are and what your goals are, you know? So I'm, 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 I love vegan processed food that it gets people to not eat animals, but it doesn't always get people to eat healthily. And I can't tell you how many vegans I know that did get fat and sick from eating the wrong food. And then they go to their conventional doctor who knows nothing about plant-based nutrition who says, the problem is it's because you didn't eat meat. And those people sometimes go back to eating meat. So that's why I want people to eat plants. Honestly, for 43 years, I was the only vegan that ate no fruits and vegetables. I thought Skittles were fruit. <laughs> and so, so let's have some balance. It, you know, let's think of vegan, you know, when I, when, when I grew up, dessert was a treat. We didn't have dessert every day and it was a special treat. Now people are having dessert breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So maybe instead of having vegan food, you know, or vegan processed food every single meal every day, maybe that could be the treat. And we could eat primarily fruit fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. So does that make sense? So, yeah. Also, you know, the other thing is, is it, you know, one of the things that I specialize in, I suppose, is it's helping people recover from food addiction. And sugar, fat, and salt are really addictive, whether they're in a Kraft macaroni and cheese or a vegan one. And so the problem with processed food in general is they use more sugar, fat, and salt than anybody would ever use at home. And they make a hyper palatable product which addicts us to this product and that's how they stay in business. You know, there's a saying in the restaurant industry, no salt, no sale. So, and this is the same thing with processed food. So yeah, I'm sort of like the anti-vegan in some ways, which is why I'm surprised they have me at the veg fest because there's no vegetables in sight. Did you guys see any vegetables here at this veg fest? No, I'm just kidding. But I have been like at the Boston, at the Boston Vegetarian Food Festival, literally all they had was cupcakes. I'm, I got kicked out of that for, for saying, no, she kicked me out. She said, how dare you? I, I made a joke. I said, thank you so much for having me at the Boston Cupcake Festival. And the organizer <laughs> actually told me to leave and this was I'm not kidding I'm not kidding so but anyway so you know 
So we're trying to get my presentation up, but it's a great question. I really appreciate it. Any other questions? You can ask me anything. It doesn't even have to be about food. I'm an open do, book. Do yeah. you ever eat out anywhere? Oh, hell no. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> H-E double hockey sticks. Um, I, 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 I under duress. You know, like if, if there's absolutely no way to get out of it. I think in the last eight years I've eaten out maybe seven times and in six of those I brought my own food. Yeah, restaurants are the kiss of death for anyone that wants to be, I'm sorry, and I have the owner of Millennium here, but, but, but again, you have to understand where a person comes from. I'm a food addict. I may be slender now, but my brain, it's like, it, it, restaurants, first of all, the food isn't as good as mine and it's more expensive. You, they don't give you enough food at restaurants. They don't even give me enough food at the house I'm staying at. It's like, <laughs> so, but I don't. Um, the one restaurant I will eat at, and I don't really don't, if, you know, I worked, let me tell you something. I worked at a restaurant for five years. If I told you what really went on in some restaurants other than Millennium, you would never go back. Do you know that 87% of people that work in restaurants do not wash their hands after taking a shit? And this is done by, this is done, of course, in Millennium, everyone does, but this is done by private survey, you know? I mean, you, you know, it, it, you know when, you, when you see something on the menu for a restaurant, it's special. You know why it's special? Because it didn't fucking sell. And so then they put a lot of cheese or whatever on it. I could, I could ruin restaurants for all of you. So I worked in a restaurant for five years. I know what goes on. And the one restaurant I will eat at is called Flame Broiler. I don't know if they have it up here. It's literally steamed rice and steamed vegetables. And even then, they still fuck it up. I get chicken half the time on it. So, so no, I don't eat, I don't, see, to me, restaurants are a punishment. And so, and they are the kiss of death for anybody trying to be health, healthy. It, if you are somebody following an oil-free diet, either for, oh, hey, Susan, I, you're so skinny now, I didn't even see you. Um, restaurants, there's still residual oil. It's just, it's just, eh, they're not fun for me anymore. But, you know, I'm, I'm such a buzzkill. But I eat so good and I have so much fun and everything like that. I have an air fryer. Does anybody else have an air fryer? Yeah. Yes, when you have an air fryer, why would you need to go to a restaurant? Because they make the best things. So it's a good thing that I have a stand-up comedy background because I can improvise. I might never get to my talk. Yeah. I have the Breville. You know, the Breville has gone up $100. It's $500 now instead of $400. That's the little oven, right? It's not little. It's big. Yeah. This is, you need the one with air frying capability. I think you had a question. So how did you go from being addicted to all that oily and yummy and salty stuff. How did I go addicted? You know, this might be an extended Q&A, just so you know. But this is good. These are, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather talk about what you want to talk about, like what it's like being vegan for 42 years. I could actually talk about that. Uh, so what was it like going from, like, a junk food vegan to, well, you know, it was hard at first. It's like, what's it like going from an alcoholic to being a sober person? There is a transition where you're absolutely miserable, right? But I've never met anybody who recovered from drug or alcohol addiction and then said, you know what, things were so much better when I woke up in my vomit. Those were the best days of my life. It's never happened, and it's the same thing with food addiction. While you're going through, Susan's nodding, while you're going through the struggle, it's miserable. But when you get to the other side, you have to realize, I, I was fat from five years old. In 1965, there were not very many fat kids in Chicago. There were 40 kids in my grade. I was the fat kid in every photo till high school. In the 60s, now one out of every three kids is obese under the age of 18. So, but back then it was not, it was not, nobody was fat except for me. So having had that reference and being obese until the age of 50, like now it's like great, I love it. But going through it was hard because you see the thing is, is People still don't acknowledge food addiction, even in the vegan community, because it's a terrible name for a disease because you can't be addicted to food or eating, but you can be addicted to particular foods, and what those foods are are the refined carbohydrates, sugar, flour, and alcohol. Now, not everybody is sensitive. Just Here's the thing. You're never going to be fatter than your genetic potential, so it doesn't matter. My, my husband is, is never going to... He's six feet tall. Even on the worst diet, he never weighed more than 160. Now that he eats like me, he's about 132. He can't help it. And so we, we look at people who are not overweight and we go, well, they can eat that stuff and they're not fat. They can eat anything and not be fat. But if you're fat, it's not you. And so there are people that can eat sugar and flour and drink alcohol in large amounts or, or, or measured amounts and not be triggered to overeat. But if every time you have sh bread or ice cream or pizza or pasta, you can't stop eating or thinking about food, you may be suffering from a refined food addiction. And I have a, you know, a quiz in my book. I only have 16 copies, by the way, because I 
Oh, we're going to get it to work. Now I'm going to have to talk really fast. But, but it is hard because, the, you know, detox is a bitch. You know, you know, it's just tell somebody that's drinking coffee their whole life to stop drinking coffee. That's what it's like. But, you know, there are places, though, that can help you, like the True North Health Center. Okay, like he left. Do, do I have, a, do I have a, a, a clicker? There's places like the True North Health Center that can help you detox and everything like that. So great, thank you so much. So I'm gonna talk really, really, really fast now. Hi, my name is Chef AJ, thank you so much for being here. Okay, <laughs> so is there, is there anybody in the, see when you talk to just mostly vegans, they're usually pretty healthy, but anybody in this room has ever known anyone that wanted to lose weight? <laughs> if every hand doesn't come up, then I don't understand. Right, okay, in, oh, I'm sorry, okay. All right, sorry about that. All right, thank you. All right, the question was, is there anybody in this room that knows somebody that wants to lose weight? Every hand should go up. If you don't, then I don't know, I don't get it. And maybe there's some people in this room that actually would also like to lose weight. Well, I'm gonna tell you how in this presentation, eat up, slim down, and get healthy. And in case you have to leave, the answer is plant-based exclusively, a plant, ex a whole plant exclusive diet. Okay, uh, where do I, where do you click this? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Where? Is this the clicker? I don't think that's the clicker. I just grabbed the clicker. Yeah. Do I have to touch the computer to do this? Oh my God. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just, just doing my stretches. Does someone want to sit here and click? All right. I don't know what to click even. That's not it. That's not the clicker. No, this is. Well, we're going to have a one slide today, <laughs> one slide talk. Luckily, I know this topic so good that I could do it without it. There we go. Okay, how do you do it? How do you click? I just push could you forward. be my? I'll tell you what. I'll give you a free book if you just sit there and run my tech. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll just, you know, when I want the next slide, I'll just go. Oh, yeah, on that. Okay. So I'm going to tell you the secrets to ultimate weight loss. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Okay, so me on the left, 2003, 43 years old, weighed 165 pounds, wearing a brown shirt, standing next to a brown cow that's 800 pounds. The cow is on the left, I am on the right, just so you know. The photo on the right taken in 2013, age 53, 127 pounds. I am now almost 60 and weigh 10 pounds less. How did I do it? I am going to reveal to you, ladies and gentlemen, the secrets to ultimate weight loss in two words. These are not eat less, they are not exercise more, and they are certainly not gastric bypass. The secret to ultimate weight loss is Calorie density. Anybody familiar with that term? What does it mean? It means how much calories are in a pound of food. Basically. Oh my God. Very good. Yes. Because a lot of times I ask that and people go, oh, how many nutrients? It has nothing to do with nutrients. It simply means the amount of calories per pound of food. And food ranges in calorie density from 100 calories per pound to 4,000 calories per pound. That means there's a 40-fold difference in the calorie density of food. Now to understand calorie density, you don't have to count calories. You don't have to know how many calories in a cup of rice or a half a cup of blueberries. You simply have to know the average calorie density of just a few food groups. You're right, calories per pound. So there's many vegan books that are based in the principles of calorie density. Dean Ornish, who wrote the first book, Proving You Could Reverse Heart Disease with a Low-Fat Vegan Diet, wrote a best-selling book in 1980 called Eat More, Way Less. And when you understand calorie density, you can eat way more and way much less. Dr. McDougall wrote another best-selling book in 1995 called The Secrets to uh, called McDougall Program for Maximum Weight Loss, I was saying in the name of my book, and another book based in the principles of calorie density, but it wasn't until I picked up this book by Dr. Barbara Rolls that I understood it, because there were a lot of photos, and you're gonna see a lot of visual comparisons in this slide presentation. This really helped me understand that, for example, the same amount of calories in a huge bowl of minestrone soup, you could have two bites of a cheeseburger. For the same amount of calories in two cups of grapes, you could have only a quarter cup of raisins. What do you think is gonna fill you up more? Dr. Rolls is the leading researcher on the subject of calorie density, where she studies human eating behavior in her laboratory at Penn State University. And one of the things she discovered is that all human beings eat the same amount of food per day by weight. Now that doesn't mean that I eat the same amount as say a vegan bodybuilder, but that most of us consistently eat three to five pounds of food per day. That's how much food we need in order to feel full and satisfied, to activate what's known as our mechanisms of satiety, our stretch nutrient and calorie receptors. Now, if we can change the average calorie density of the food we're eating by as little as 500 calories a day, we will slowly, safely, sustainably lose a pound a week. So we're going to create a calorie density chart, and I sell these if you really want to buy one or you can take a picture. 
Um, green means go. Of these foods, you may freely eat. Red means stop. In my opinion, do not eat these foods. Purple being my favorite color. These foods are healthy, but they're just calorically dense. So remember, these are food groups. This is not an individual food. What group of food would you guess is 100 calories a pound? Yes, exactly. Greens, green leafy vegetables, vegetables, absolutely, non-starchy vegetables. So if you look at this photo, some of these are actually botanically fruits, cucumbers, tomatoes, eggplant, bell pepper, okra, zucchini. These are actually 67 calories a pound. It's impossible to overeat on non-starchy vegetables, yet most Americans actually eat very few vegetables. Americans eat less than 10% of their calories from fruits and vegetables and over 92% of their calories from processed food and animal products. And I tell you, I know some vegans that eat 100% of their calories from vegan processed food. So if you were to Google non-starchy vegetables, you get a list like this. You could eat a different one every day without repeating. The problem is most people don't eat very many vegetables because they don't like them, but that's where I come in. I can teach you ways to make them delicious, like with a balsamic Dijon mustard glaze and using an air fryer. But the truth is, is we develop taste preferences for what we habitually eat. And one of the reasons we don't like vegetables is because we don't eat them very much. But there is a population of people in the world that historically has eaten a lot of vegetables. And this culture are also the thinnest people in the world. And who are they? Asians, thank you very much, 3% obesity rate, I can't stand them. They're so, <laughs> always so good looking and thin, but it's not just their genes, it is their genes, of course, but they also eat a lot of vegetables. They, they eat a starch-based diet based on white rice, but every person I've ever met that is Asian, that, that's from Asia, that maybe wasn't raised here, they eat, but even when I, even when I was working as a comedian in Japan, Breakfast was vegetables. We had miso soup with vegetables and salad and rice for breakfast. So the number one secret to ultimate weight loss or any weight loss is just to eat more vegetables. So whatever you're eating, whether you eat the junk food or not, make sure half your plate is always non-starchy vegetables. Conan O'Brien says, the first time since 2007, the FDA has actually approved a device to treat obesity. This amazing breakthrough is called a vegetable, and it's true. <laughs> You can tell how, they did a study at Tufts University, the more servings of fruits and vegetables, especially vegetables people ate, the lower their body weight and BMI. So if you are not the weight you wanna be, you are not eating enough vegetables. What is enough? A minimum of two pounds a day, one pound raw, one pound cooked. I eat probably double that. So you guys can all be making, taking the veg pledge, eating two pounds a day. The only problem is, is your doctor will say, they won't be able to find anything wrong with you. Because as luck would have it, the food that is lowest in calorie density is also highest in nutrient density. So you can train your body to crave healthy food. You know, a lot of people don't like vegetables because they don't eat vegetables. It takes about 15 times to eat a food for it to be a food that you may actually like. Any of you have kids in the room? Like, the first time that your kid turned their head and didn't eat it, did you just say, oh, guess, well, we're just not gonna try? No, you're the same way with vegetables. You have to keep trying until you develop a taste for them. The other thing that's so cool about vegetables, if you struggle with food addiction and sugar addiction and weight, is that if you're willing to eat greens, like Dr. Esselstyn tells his heart patients to do six times a day, there is a compound in dark green leafy vegetables called thylakoids, which actually has been proven to suppress hunger and shut off the hunger switch. So it's one of the coolest things you can do if you're struggling with food cravings or trying to lose weight. Now, no one has ever gotten fat by eating too much kale. And, but the thing is, I want you to eat it whole, not juice and blend it, and here's why. There's a concept known as the RMR or BMR, the resting metabolic rate or the basal metabolic rate. And everybody needs about 10 calories per pound of body weight just to beat your heart and breathe your lungs if you're laying in a bed not doing anything. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you need 1,500 calories just to survive. Could anybody eat 15 pounds of vegetables? No, you probably burn more calories in the chewing and digesting than you would in the vegetables. They're mostly fiber and water with vitamins and minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants. So again, if you're struggling with weight or health, eat vegetables. They also are a great beauty regimen. They're, they really, and people, I, I barely wear makeup anymore and they blow oh, your skin's so beautiful. Kale, whatever the question, kale is the answer. Trust me. <laughs> All right, the next food group is 300 calories a pound. What do you think is a little more calorically dense than vegetables? Right, it's fruit. Now the truth is, I just mentioned six fruits that are 67 calories a pound. Most fruits about 200, like apples and grapefruit and oranges, 
But to make up for the bananas, which are 400 calories a pound, and some of the higher caloric um, tropical fruits, we're going to average it at 300 calories a pound fruit. So if you read my first book, you know I didn't eat any fruits and vegetables till I was 43. I started my day with Coke Slurpees. I was drinking regular Dr. Pepper every day. I think fruit is sometimes so sweet now that I can't even eat it. It is so incredibly sweet because I haven't eaten sugar for, I don't know, 13 or so years now. So. Why do we want you to eat your food whole instead of juice and blend it? And by the way, you know, I don't recommend just eating fruits and vegetables. There are some people that do. They follow a diet called the 80-10-10 or the low-fat raw vegan diet or they're fruitarians. I'm not recommending that because in my opinion, starch is the most important component to really feel like satisfaction with your food. But the point I'm trying to make is the people that eat that way, that keep their average calorie density to 300 calories per pound or less, they're the leanest people you'll ever see. You cannot gain weight at a calorie density that low. So our stomachs are about the size of a cantaloupe. They hold about a liter of food, which is 4.22 cups. Now, apples are 200 calories a pound, so I weighed out two and a half pounds of apples. The vial on the left contains about six apples, 500 calories of apples. I then juiced those apples, and look what I got on the right. Now, if those were your stomach, what do you think would make you feel more full? The whole apples or the apple juice? And do you think you could even eat 500 calories of apples? Most people probably couldn't, but the problem with juicing I'm not telling you never to have a green juice, but the problem with juicing in general is something is being removed from the food. What's missing? Absolutely, that's what I heard. Fiber, pulp, exactly. And so what happens is it increases your propensity to overeat, but in the case of juice, when you take the fiber out, what happens is you drink that juice and now your blood sugar gets raised so much more quickly. And when that happens, your insulin gets raised much more quickly and insulin is the hormone that drives fat into the cells. And so if you wanna feel full, you've gotta fill the whole tank. And when you juice or blend your food, you're artificially reducing the volume, okay? So next we have applesauce, but this is the idea of, of a green smoothie. There was nothing taken away from the applesauce, but the Vitamix so reduced the volume. And so what happens is you still have a lot more room in your stomach, which means you're going to be hungry. Now a fruit puree like applesauce or a green smoothie isn't gonna raise the blood sugar as much as the juice, but it's still gonna raise it faster than eating the whole food. You know, Chewing actually increases satiety. Chewing your food actually increases satisfaction. Liquid calories just are not favorable for weight loss. What is favorable for weight loss is eating large portions of food because satiety actually begins with the eyes because when you see you're gonna get a large amount of food, you know you're going to be satisfied. And so the pulp and the fiber, it's all intact there, but the volume has been artificially reduced. Dr. Esselstyn says we didn't exit our mother's wombs clutching a Vitamix. It, we already have 32 of the best juicers and blenders right here, so we are meant to chew our food. Okay, so dried fruit, I love dried fruit, but did you know that dried fruit is more than six times as calorically dense as whole fruit? 200, uh, a pound of apples is 200 calories. A pound of apple rings, 1,300 calories. And I can make these myself with my dehydrator, but you could see how easy it would be to overeat. Now the fiber is intact, but what's missing from the dried fruit? Right, so the second secret to ultimate weight loss is to make sure that everything you eat not only has fiber, but water that's intact. And the reason is, is because fiber plus water creates what's known as bulk. And bulk creates satiety, that feeling of fullness that tells you to stop eating and allows you to do so on fewer calories. This is what all four incarnations of apples look like, 500 calories of each. Imagine this was your stomach, what would fill you up more? The answer is always the whole food. So the next, this is, these are food groups. So the, I'm just gonna go on and tell you what it is in the interest of time. So this is, the, this is the unrefined complex carbohydrates. I'm so tired of people saying carbs are bad, potatoes are fattening. People, if, you, if all you eat is potatoes, you'll be so skinny you won't know what to do. The truth is carbs are bad when they're processed carbs, like sugar, flour, and alcohol, but not when they're unrefined complex carbohydrates, which is what every successful population throughout human history has eaten at least 80% of their calories from. So if we break it down, 400 calories per pound is potatoes and sweet potatoes, 500 calories a pound are whole grains, whether they contain gluten or not, quinoa, teff, millet, amaranth, brown rice, corn, oats, and at 550 to 600 calories a pound, we have beans, split peas, and lentils. Now, I didn't invent calorie density. Calorie density has been around as long as food has been around, but what I added to this equation is the vertical 
red line, which is why I have these little bracelets that say E to the left of the red line. I didn't always have PowerPoint. When people would come to me for coaching for weight loss, I would write this presentation on a board with each client. And at the end, this gal scratched her head and quizzically said, what am I supposed to eat? And I got very frustrated and I said, just eat to the left of the red line. Well, as luck would have it, research has corroborated that if you keep your average calorie density to 567 calories per pound or less, which is fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, most people can eat a style called ad libitum, where we can eat as much as we want, as often as we want, whenever we want, until comfortably full, not so Thanksgiving I'm going to throw up full, and not only lose weight, but get very close to our ideal weight. And so it's a pretty cool system if you're somebody that doesn't like to weigh and measure your food or count calories, carbs, or points, or eat skimpy portions. And so uh, at 567, you can round up to 600. And actually, the calorie density that our species evolved at was only 700 calories or pound, believe it or not. But so why are 80 to 90 percent of Americans overweight or obese now? Well, they're not eating to the left of the red line. They're eating the majority of their calories from the right of the red line. And so let's see what they're eating. Oh, just, we're just going to go quickly through these pictures. You can see how much, oh, stop, good. So those pictures were actual recipes from my book, Left of the Red Line Foods. There was one picture of a restaurant called Sharky's. I don't think you have it up here, but I worked with restaurants when I lived in LA to get them to have whole food plant-based meals without oil. You can't touch the salt. Restaurants will not take out the salt. They know that people won't eat the food without it, but I was able to get them to do whole food without, without at least the oil and sugar, so that was pretty cool. And those were actual size portions that I eat, not for, I mean, I, people take my picture. That's how much I eat and more. Okay, so 750 calories a pound, we have avocados. Now, avocado is a whole natural food, and if you're gonna eat fat, I want you to eat the fat whole, nuts, seeds, avocado, rather than the processed oil. Avocado is a good source of monounsaturated fat, but the problem is the caloric density is so high, it's 750 calories per pound. Now, who knows what a serving of avocado is? I'm hearing a quarter, a half. 10, you know, it depends on the person. Okay, so I Googled this and I went to the California Avocado Commission website. These are the people that grow them, so ostensibly want you to eat as many of them as possible, and they say that a serving of avocado is one-fifth of an avocado. If you can take a ripe, luscious avocado, cut it into five segments, eat one Monday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you don't need my lecture. But most of us can't, let's face it, they're delicious, these high-fat, pleasurable foods. So just keep in mind their caloric density. So this, this is the, these are the carbs I want you to avoid, the processed carbs, the sugar, the flour, the alcohol, and of course dairy. You know, if you're gonna eat it, I mean, I don't want anybody to eat animal products, but if you were, probably dairy is the worst thing you could eat because it's not only an animal product, it's linked to cancer and all kinds of things, but it's also a processed food. So all the addiction that people have, all the food addiction is in this category, sugar, flour, alcohol, and dairy. These are the, you know, nobody's, there's no avocado anonymous that I'm aware of, or <laughs> kale anonymous, or arugula, you know, it, but people do struggle with giving up cheese. You know, people that are vegetarian that want to go vegan, cheese is very hard because of the casomorphic it turns to uh, the casein, the protein in dairy turns to a morphine, opiate-like substance in the brain. And sugar and flour, the problem with it, if you're sensitive, not everybody is. My husband could just eat junk all day and be, I mean, not be fine, not be as healthy, but not propelled to overeat. But for those of us that are sensitive or vulnerable to food addiction, sugar and flour go through the exact same refining process as drugs and alcohol. And so that's what makes it so problematic. This is how I feel about uh, processed food, in case you're wondering. Okay, ice cream, 1,200 calories a pound. Bread and flour, 14 to 1,500 calories a pound. Cheese, 1,600 calories a pound. Sugar, 1,800 calories a pound. Americans eat over 150 pounds of sugar per person per year. I haven't had any in like almost 20 years. Somebody's probably eating double that. Now, did you know that it takes three feet of sugar cane to make one teaspoon, excuse me, one tablespoon, no, it's one teaspoon of sugar, three feet of sugar cane to make one teaspoon of sugar. You could never eat that much sugar cane because you'd have all the, it'd be, you'd be chewing all, all year to get through that. And so anytime you process a food, you make it calorie rich and nutrient poor. You know, if, if we're eating 150 pounds per person per year, that means most people are eating 900 calories a day from something that really isn't food. And you, if you follow any, thing in the news, you know that sugar is linked to every disease process from tooth decay to cancer to heart disease to diabetes, and it's, um, it's just something that I think people should avoid, except they didn't like that message, so they're leaving because they want to go have some sugar now. <laughs> yeah, I guess I hit a nerve. Oh, I hit another nerve. Time, yep. Yeah. These people are going to go get their sugar. Yeah, anyway, so <laughs> if you, brain scans and MRIs have shown that it's as addictive as cocaine and heroin. You know, most people, whether they eat sugar or not, know that it's not a health food. Nobody's really touting it as a health food. You know, when you think about it, sugar beets are 195 calories a pound. Sugar is 1,800 calories a pound. It's like 
nine times as calorically dense. But um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Anytime you process a food, calorie rich and nutrient poor. So what the thing is, is they may know sugar is not a health food, but they might eat it. But try to take bread or flour or pasta away from people, and they're like, I can't believe it. You know, bread is the staff of life. We break bread with our loved ones. Well, the thing is, is I'm not saying to never eat bread, but what I'm saying is if you're trying to lose weight or suffering from food addictions, the problem with bread, first of all, is it's high caloric density. You know, whole grains are only 500 calories a pound. You could eat a pound of brown rice, which I often do, cooked. It's about 500 calories. You'll feel very full and satisfied and, and activate all the mechanisms of satiety. But if you if you mill that brown rice into a flour to make a dessert or a cake, it's now 1,500 calories to fill the same space in, in, in the tank. And so that's what happens. Also, when you have a whole grain and you cut it with a sharp blade, you have now what's known as a broken grain. So what happens is you have um, an increased surface area, which means when you ingest it, you have increased absorption, which again raises blood sugar more quickly and insulin more quickly, which drives fat into the cells. So this is the breakdown again of those four food groups. And these are these jars are four cups, about the size of your stomach. And I'm just going to put compare everything to my favorite food, potatoes. I couldn't even get 200 calories of potatoes in the jar, but that's 400 calories of cheese, and that's 400 calories of maple syrup, 400 calories of flour. This is how you think about that category. Just that's how I truly feel. But you know, okay, but um, bum. Don't think about it especially if you're struggling. If you're not struggling, 2,500 calories a pound. This list always tops the most craved food on every list. Pizza is only number two. What do you think is number one, ladies? Chocolate. Of course, chocolate. When they ask women which would they'd rather go with a month without chocolate or sex, every man knows how that was answered. Absolutely, chocolate. Chocolate is a food that is high in fat, and it's not that it's so bad necessarily. It comes from a, a seed. The, it's, the cacao bean is actually a seed. It was used in the Aztec civilization as currency. And it does have some marginal properties. It's actually higher in antioxidants than red wine or green tea. But how is chocolate usually consumed? With a lot of sugar, usually with a lot of fat, and that can be the problem. Now, does, how many people think chocolate tastes better than kale? <laughs> be honest. Okay. We, do you want to bet me $100 that the reason you like chocolate better is because it tastes better? You want to bet me, though? I've never, I really need $100 because these earrings were not cheap, you know. All right. Okay, so nobody's ever bet me this, but this is, the, this is to me the fun part, and this is all the stuff, I, all the exciting stuff about the brain chemistry that I learned at True North or from the book The Pleasure Trap. So they did a study with self-professed chocoholics where they brought, this was not about weight, by the way, they brought self-professed chocoholics into the research lab, and they had every kind of chocolate available, candies, cakes, cookies, pies, and ice cream, whatever they put on their questionnaire, free access to all this chocolate. But before they unleashed them on the buffet, they gave them an injection of a drug called naloxone. Does anybody know what naloxone is? Naloxone is? Nobody? Oh yeah, we, there's always one heroin addict in the room. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad you're recovered now, thank you. She's absolutely right. It's, it's, a, it's a drug that if, if, if somebody were to take what could be a fatal heroin overdose, if they get to the emergency room in time, they're administered this drug which blocks the blood-brain barrier so the heroin would not kill the person. So when the chocoholics were injected with naloxone, they walked up to the buffet, they looked for their favorite piece, they took a bite and they wanted no more chocolate. So what happened? Did it not taste good anymore? Was it no longer creamy and delicious? Or was some perception of the taste blocked? You see, remember I said earlier, taste is subjective. We develop taste preferences for what we habitually eat. There is only one taste preference that is innate in humans, and that is breast milk. Everything else is learned. That's why you can go to cultures around the world. They'll, they'll eat things like eyeballs and, and, and intestines, things, that, crickets that we may not eat here, scorpions when I was in um, another country, and they think these are delicious. We develop taste preferences for what we habitually eat. Eat. I know people who grew up because of allergies never had chocolate. They don't crave it, they don't like it, they don't want it. People that have grown up eating the way that I recommend, they, they don't eat bread and flour, they, they love the food they eat. And so the thing is, is what you have to understand is that all eating, even lowly kale at 100 calories per pound, all eating stimulates the production of a neurotransmitter in your brain that has you perceive pleasure. It starts with a D, you know what that is? Right, dopamine. All eating stimulates the production of dopamine in the brain. But the more calorically concentrated the calories, the more dopamine is, re is released. So we say we like the taste of chocolate better. It really doesn't have anything to do with taste. It has to do with because we get a greater high from it. Oh my God, five minutes. I'm not like, I'm going to have to talk really fast. Okay, so, so that's, um, it's not really fair because you kind of started me a little late because of tech. But okay, so, so that's really the reason. You know, and there's other ways to get dopamine. We could have sex, so turn to the person, well, you're too young, sir, but other than you.
Yep, he's alive. Okay, <laughs> I, just, I was just checking that this child was alive. Okay, so that's so you say you like something better because you're basically addicted to this artificial stimulation of dopamine in the brain. That's why we like these foods better. 2,800 calories a pound. I've averaged. These are nuts. Oh, sorry. This is 500 calories of M&Ms, 200 calories of potatoes, nuts, seeds, seed butters, nut butters. Nuts are very healthy, but they're very, very calorically dense. And for most people, especially women, it's very hard for them to lose weight and maintain that weight loss if they're including nuts and seeds. If you're worried about your omega-3 fatty acids, have a tablespoon of ground flaxseed every day on your oatmeal or salad, and I promise you, you will be fine. 400 calories of walnuts, 200 calories of potatoes. You grind the nuts into nut butters, you reduce the volume even more. Peanut butter should be on like the, the no-fly list or whatever. Peanut butter's crack. It is not your friend if you're trying to lose weight. Um, so if you look at the photo on the left, that's a piece of pecan pie that I make. It's in my next book, and it's made from literally just dates and pecans. It's about eight bites, according to my mouth. 657 calories, over 40 grams of fat. On the right is a lunch that I might eat every day, a two pound sweet potato and four artichokes. Less calories. What's gonna fill you up more? Hopefully you said the, the dish on the right. I was eating an ounce of nuts a day in 2011. I could not lose any weight, but the minute I switched a food that was 3,200 calories a pound for a food that has been vilified for years that was 400 calories a pound, the weight magically fell off. And I eat literally two to three pounds of potatoes or sweet potatoes a day. If you look like that guy, you're eating too many nuts. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> 4,000 calories a pound, and I use this term loosely of a food, oil. All oil is atherogenic, diabetogenic, and obesogenic, meaning oil contributes to heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. I'm not here to talk about the, the health aspects of oil. If you want to know, I recommend Forks Over Knives or the book Prevent or Reverse Heart Disease, why oil is so deleterious to your health. Again, I'm not against fat. I'm against processed fats, so eat the nuts, the seeds, the avocado. Well, go back one second. You can see that 400 calories of oil barely even registers. You, for, for the same amount of calories in one tablespoon of olive oil, you could have two pounds of zucchini. You put it in the air fryer with a little balsamic vinegar, unbelievably delicious. Okay, our stomachs. Again, we, we talk about these oil slips under the radar undetected by your mechanisms of satiety. It can't activate the stretch receptors because there's no fiber. It can't activate the nutrient receptors because there's no nutrients. And by the time it could ostensibly activate the calorie receptors, you'll already overeaten. Same thing with animal products. There's no fiber in water. You can't feel full on animal products and processed food until you overeat on calories. But if you eat to the left or the red line, one, two, three, four, five, however many times a day you're hungry, you will feel full, satisfied, and get all the nutrients you need. I know. So Dr. McDougall's been saying for 40 years, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Fat is more than twice as calorically dense as protein and carbohydrates. Even if you overeat on protein and carbohydrates, you can't, it doesn't get stored as fat. That's called de novo lipogenesis. Pigs can do it. We can't. It takes only 3% of the calories in the dietary fat to be stored as body fat. If you could convert carbohydrate to fat, which you can't, it would take about 30% of the calories to do that. Now, alcohol, World Health Organization said no longer recognizes any amount is safe linked to every cancer. But even if it was good for you, it's a liquid calorie. It's almost like drinking oil. So if your goal is weight loss and health, you might want to avoid these things. So I'm going to go really quickly during these slides. I hope you'll give me a couple more minutes because you started late because these are the pictures that I was talking about. These pictures are not calorie comparisons. These are fat comparisons, which shows you if you're somebody that likes to eat large volumes of food, which is what we were designed for, then you get to eat a lot more food if you're not including a lot of fat. So for the same amount of fat in one potato chips, you can have 40 carrots. For the same amount of fat in one cracker with sour cream and an onion dip, you can have a huge tray of crudite with a fat-free bean dip. Same amount of calories in a tablespoon of ranch, 10 pounds of cherry tomatoes. Same amount of fat in one chocolate chip, five pounds of grapes. You could freeze those grapes. They make the best sorbet. The sandwich on the, on the right, characterized by golden arches, has 25 grams of fat. That 12-pound bowl of fruit sandwich has only trace amounts of fat. If you want a million-dollar figure, don't eat from the dollar menu, because the more you eat at the golden arches, the sooner you reach the pearly gates, I promise. <laughs> the same amount of fat in one fun-size M&M, you could have 13 apples, huge bowl of vegan chili, or two bites of a pizza. So you could have two tablespoons of guacamole for eight grams of fat, or you could have a huge bowl of salsa. I was working at True North in Santa, Bar uh, Santa Rosa, where I'm going after this presentation to work, and they, they serve a low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet, SOS-free, sugar, oil, salt-free. And so the five weeks I was there, one day they brought out a tub of guacamole as a topping. 
And they have 11 inch dinner plates at True North. They're bigger than your home plate, which is about eight inches because they want you to eat more salad. And everybody was filling half their plate with guacamole. And Dr. Goldhammer said, does anybody know what a serving of guacamole is? And nobody did. And he said, well, I just wanted everybody to know it's, it's two tablespoons. And I said, per chip? He goes, no, per day. So. <laughs> There you have it, okay. You could have the world's smallest hot fudge sundae or get a Yonana's machine or a champion juicer and make a huge bowl of fruit sorbet, which I often do. You can have as much salad as you want with balsamic vinegar, but the minute you put a little feta cheese on, boom, seven grams of fat. You can have one donut or 71 oranges, what's gonna fill you up more, and they did have vegan donuts out there. One peanut M&M or nine jumbo strawberries, you need a chocolate hit, get some good balsamic vinegar in chocolate. One truffle, 26 oranges. You could have one peanut or three cups of Air Pop popcorn. Air Pop popcorn's not a weight loss food though. All the water's been removed and it's 1,800 calories per pound. You can have two huge baked potatoes, put those in your air fryer, you can have two conventional french fries. So, the foods to the left of the red line, these are whole foods found in nature, contain water and, water and fiber, which creates bulk, which creates satiety, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, micronutrients. The foods to the right of the red line, in red, these are processed food, they're not found in nature, they contain little to no water and fiber. Okay, you know what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go fast during these pictures. Um, stop for a minute though. You know, there's a saying inside every a, a fat person, a thin person is trying to get out, but Dr. Greger apparently was also trying to get out in this one. Okay, so we're just gonna just show you people from my Ultimate Weight Loss Program really quickly that have lost weight, and these are real people. They sent me their picture. It doesn't matter how young or old you are or anything else. We're just gonna keep going, keep going, wait till we get, oh, uh, stop. I call this from martini to bikini, proof that alcohol is not your friend if you're trying to lose weight. Okay, good, good, good. Look, at this girl lost 300 pounds. It's, this works, so it's amazing. Uh, that's my book, I have exactly 16 copies, actually 15 now, because she gets a free book for running tech. And that's my first book, and that's my TV show. It's now available on YouTube, it's kind of good. That's my website, which I forgot to hand out my little brochure to get you guys to sign up. Shoot, it's in the other room. Um, so. Uh, that's the magnet which I have. So for optimal health, disease prevention, disease reversal, the answer is E to the left of the red line. Sorry I had to talk so fast. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to be doing a cooking demo right now if you want to sign up or buy anything. So thank you. Is this your laptop?